This basic work for the pelvis that we are going to do is something all my beginner students do, but also later it will be a valuable tool, especially for people that suffer from back problems. For them it will be very important to figure out how to move the pelvis and they can also use all these pelvis movements to reduce back pain. The pelvis is not really the middle, the middle of our body is usually said to be more around here, but the pelvis is very close to it. So actually the pelvis is our connection point from the spine and the legs and all the time when we are moving around this connection point is involved but for too many people this is a wide spot on the map that is not yet discovered. We will do a seven minute follow along of seven different movements all one minute long. This will teach you how to move the pelvis, this will create a lot of sensory input that your brain now gets about the pelvis and this will increase blood flow so metabolism in the pelvis that is very good for healing and recovery processes in the pelvis. All right, let's go. We are starting with tilting the pelvis side to side like this and it's very important that you keep the knees unlocked so lightly bent like this because otherwise you will struggle to do that and you can straighten and bend the knees but you cannot keep them both straight. So you have to work with the knees here if you do it standing. Yeah? You see I keep the head on top of the pelvis and for the people that want to dig deeper into this we call this a closed kinetic chain or short CKC. And you will see I will do all the motions in that style with the head staying on top of the pelvis. Yeah? And I aim all the time here for softness. I want to make it very soft, yeah? relaxed and I want to understand how do I move the pelvis through the knees here. Okay, next one is forward and backwards tilt. I'm going again into the knees and I'm pulling the pelvis up here and then I'm pulling the pelvis up in the back. Yeah, vroom, I pull it here, I pull it here. So this is the anterior tilt because it's fallen forward the pelvis and this is the posterior pelvic tilt because it's fallen backwards the pelvis. So I'm going back and forth between those two. You see knees are bent yeah, with the straight knees. There's also something possible so you can try but it's just easier to move here with the knees bent. I invite you also to do all sorts of changes, all sorts of little changes, what we call micro variations. For example, how you stand. Yeah, you can stand closer or wider and we're going to the next one. And the next one is a combination. So it's a diagonal line. Boom, I'm here and then diagonal over there. Yeah? So I go anterior pelvic tilt and onto this hip and posterior pelvic tilt and onto that hip. Yeah? From one to the other, changing between anterior and posterior pelvic tilt. And finish what I just wanted to say about the micro variations. You can also change how your feet are turned, yeah? more out, more in, or one out, one in, or one foot is forward, one is backwards. You can also do this stuff hanging and it will work a little bit differently. You can also try this lying on the ground yeah, or on all fours. I invite you to try this in all sorts of ways. I will tell you when to change side, which is now we're changing to the other side. And it's good to do that in all sorts of ways. Yeah, not just in the standard way, which would be like this, two feet there. You can spend your first trainings like this, that's great, just in this standard position. And then through time start to play with it, yeah, because you want to be able to do that in all sorts of situations. Also for the people that get bored easily, it can make it more interesting. But if you're one of the people that likes to do one thing for a long time, that's also fine. Then just continue 
with the basic one and implement some variations here and there, but you can stick with the basic one for a long time also to really have it clear for you. If that's a white spot on your movement map. All right, that was number four. So the fifth one is rotation. Have a look, I'm still in the knees and now I'm rotating the pelvis and I can do different variations. I can stay with the head looking forward like this or I can keep the spine stiff and let the pelvis move my spine. This is a very nice challenge. This is easier because you're used to do that from the walking, yeah? But to rotate with can be quite challenging yeah, to not do any extra movements with, with the spine, just the stiff spine. So you can choose what you're doing. But the important thing is that I want you to rotate the pelvis and see my knees are not buckling in. I'm not doing this, yeah? I'm here, I have the knee stable and I'm moving in the hip joint, like my hip joint is soft. And through the so soft hip joint, I can move the pelvis. The nice thing, if you keep the head forward or even the chest, there's also some nice rotation up here. So that can be, it can be nicer for the, for the body, although coordinatively it's a little bit easier. So I like people to do both. All right, number six and seven is a circle. This is a tilting circle because we are doing tilts. Yeah, we do, did this forward and backward and side to side tilts. And now we're doing this in a circle. You see side, then posterior, side, anterior. Aim for range of motion. You can do speed also later. In the beginning, I would rather advise you to do it slower, but to do it a bit quicker later, that can be nice. And again, you can play around. Maybe you don't play around so much in the first ones, but then after you did this session a few times, you can start to play around. Yeah, if you're very stiff, it might take a while until it feels soft. We change direction. And with a while, I mean, it depends on how much you do it. Because if you do this only once a month, yeah, maybe you get the coordination, but the softening effects from this, you will not get so much. So for this, you have to do it regularly. I like to do this also in the morning or it's nice after sitting around a lot. Yeah, when you do desk work, then you can stand up in between also or after and circle the pelvis. Also sort of reconnects your body in that sense. Yeah, after you did a lot of stuff just with your hands and the eyes and here to do something with the center of the body will shift your awareness into a different state. All right, that's it. That's the basic seven minutes for the pelvis and then there are movements that we build on top of that. So continue to practice.